Now, with that said, I often get asked whether or not for people who already have a little sniffle, they're feeling a little run down, or perhaps a lot run down, should they do deliberate cold exposure? And what's a little tricky to give a one size fits all answer, but I think we can safely say that if you are feeling malaise, if you're feeling like you have to rest, you're tired, you're not feeling good because of a cold or because of a flu or because of a bacterial infection, okay? Now I'm not saying just feeling not good. I'm saying feeling not good due to a cold or other form of virus or bacterial infection. Then I would say stay out of deliberate cold exposure. Don't use it. Now, why would I say that given the data I'll talk about in a few minutes showing that regular deliberate cold exposure, if done correctly, can in fact increase immune system markers and perhaps even make you much more robust to combating different types of infection through the release of adrenaline. We'll talk about what all that looks like in a moment in terms of protocols and some of the science. But to just be very clear and very direct, if you're sick, stay out of deliberate cold exposure. There I would instead recommend warmer hot baths, warmer hot showers, the sauna, etc. But I also would caution that if you are getting into saunas that are too hot, you know, saunas that are so hot that it's stressful for you. And again, a lot of people use deliberate heat exposure because of the stress it induces. They're doing um, some heat induced, for instance, heat shock proteins and different ways of increasing heart rate. That's a different sort of thing. That's hard, stressful in order to generate an adaptation. I don't recommend doing that. In fact, I don't recommend doing deliberate cold exposure, exercise or deliberate heat exposure if you're feeling really not well. Now, if you're feeling just a little bit not well, you're feeling a little bit run down, a little bit of sniffle, a little bit of malaise, well, then it's kind of an edge case where we could say, all right, you know what, just take a hot shower and go to sleep. And that's probably the best advice, right? That good old fashioned advice. But if you are determined to do your deliberate cold exposure anyway, then I would say definitely get warm or take a hot shower afterwards, hot bath or a hot sauna, but not too hot that it's stressful, of course. And keep in mind that one of the variables that's been measured quite a lot in laboratory studies of deliberate cold exposure is the increase in immune system markers. So I'll provide a few links to some of these studies, um, although nowadays there are many, many of them, but it's very clear that deliberate cold exposure can increase the release and the production of different immune molecules and immune cells. One slightly older study, but nonetheless, a good study that has relevance here is entitled Immune System of Cold Exposed and Cold Adapted Humans. Now, keep in mind that this study is a little bit extreme and there are reasons for that. Uh, I guess to make a long story short, oftentimes in order to quote unquote, see an effect in a study, scientists will use conditions that are pretty extreme compared to control group. Oftentimes you'll see a dose response too, but it's a little bit trickier to do with uh, human studies of deliberate cold exposure. It can be done, but not too common. But here they used a pretty, what I would call extreme stimulus. It was exposing people to 14 degrees Celsius water. So that's 57.2 degrees Fahrenheit, which isn't that cold. It's kind of like cool, I would say very cool water, but not what you might consider cold, depending on how well you tolerate cold. And that will vary, of course. But they had people exposed to that for an hour, which is a pretty long time. You know, most people, as I mentioned, are using colder temperatures of deliberate cold exposure. So even, you know, high 30s, low 40s maybe upper 40s for anywhere from one to 10 minutes, depending on how conditioned they are. Uh, and again, don't just jump into 10 minutes of deliberate cold exposure, please, um, at you know 35 degrees or 40 degrees or even 45 degrees. If you aren't familiar with deliberate cold exposure, you have to ease into these sorts of things over time. And if you're interested in protocols for deliberate cold exposure, we have a zero cost newsletter at hubermanlap.com. Go to the menu, go newsletter, and you can find that. We've done several episodes on deliberate cold exposure. 